Hello and welcome to this video on doing a 2D rigid body analysis of the boom of a crane. Uh, the boom of this crane is the uh, long orange pole that lifts the load. Specifically, what we want to find out here is the force that the hydraulic cylinder, um, this little guy right here, has to apply to keep the load um, in, a, in static equilibrium. Okay, so that's our goal, is to find the force applied by, by the hydraulic cylinder. We'll also uh, look at the force applied at the pivot point, which is somewhere down here inside the body of the crane. Uh, this is useful when you're um, designing the bearing that uh, will make this pivot point work. Okay, so the first step in solving these sorts of problems is to always make a free body diagram. So here we have the boom of the crane, and I've gone through and uh, added the measurements and angles and such, and now we need to build the free body diagram. Uh, to do that, let's go back to our picture of the crane. Uh, we will cut the load free here and replace it by a force. We'll cut the hydraulic cylinder off there and replace it by a force. And um, we'll basically cut the rest of the crane away from the boom and replace it by a force. So if we do that, if we go back to our picture of the crane, we have out here on the edge of the boom a force which represents the load and the load is 500 pounds. Okay, this point right here is, the, um, we're assuming is the center of gravity of the boom and so this point will have a downward force applied which is 2,000 pounds. So this is representing the force of gravity on the boom itself. Then we'll have a force which I will call um, Fa. Okay. And this is the force, the reaction force, that the body of the crane applies to the boom. We, in this case, uh, because we have a pivot joint, we know that there is no torque created by uh, this joint. Uh, we know that there will be a force, but we don't know its magnitude or direction. And finally, we have the force applied by the hydraulic cylinder which is right here, and I'll label this F sub B. Okay. In this case, because the hydraulic cylinder is uh, essentially a two-force body, it's uh, pinned between the boom and a mounting point on the crane body. Because it's a two-point uh, body, or a two-force body, we know that the force it applies on the boom is going to be in line with the axis of the cylinder. So in this case, we do know the direction of F sub B, but we don't know its magnitude. Okay, so this is a statics problem, which means uh, we're, we're looking for static equilibrium. So to solve this, we'll use force balance. which is that the sum of the forces in the x direction is zero, the sum of the forces in the y direction is zero, and the sum of the moments about some point is zero. And for this, we will choose A as the point. Um, it makes some things somewhat easier. Okay, so we've got the sum of forces about the x-axis, the y-axis, and then the moments about A. The next thing we need to do is make sure we've clearly defined our x and y axes. 
And um, I'm going to do this in a way that's probably not exactly what you'd expect. Um, quite often you're used to seeing uh, the x and y axis like this. Uh, but uh, it turns out that this problem is a lot easier to work if we choose a different set of axes. So basically, we'll choose our axes this, this way, this vertical direction, oh, which I just messed up. Let's try that one again. Okay, This vertical direction, there we go, is the y-axis. And perpendicular to that, along the center line of the boom, this is the x-axis. Okay, and why did I choose the axes this way? Well, it makes computing the moments that are generated by the um, that are generated by the the uh, load and the weight uh, quite a bit easier to compute. And we've uh, put the um, the origin of these axes uh, in the at A, so it also, uh, for that reason, makes it somewhat easier to compute. Okay, so what we need to do then, the next step in order to solve this, if we want to get the sum of the forces in the x direction and the sum of the forces in the y direction, we need to take our forces and break them into their components in the x and y direction. So let's start with, um, say, the load up here, this 500 pounds. Okay, so I have 500 pounds. Well, that's supposed to be vertical. Let's try it again. That's more vertical. And um, this has a dis uh, length of 500 pounds. And I need to break this into an X component, which I'll draw this way, and a Y component. Okay, again, because my axes are like this, this represents the X and this represents the Y. So I've got uh, a component here in the X direction and a component in the y direction. So the and the angle here, due to the geometry of our situation, we have the center line of the boom being um, at 45 degrees, and we uh, have the weight of the load uh, extending uh, down vertically. So that means that this angle here is 45 degrees, which is what this angle here is then. So I can say then that the load in the x direction is going to be 500 pounds times the cosine of 45 degrees. And the load in the y direction is going to be 500 pounds times the sine of 45 degrees. Okay, um, I have also in uh, basically the same geometry, I've got the weight of the boom itself. So we'll do this guy in green. I've got a weight of 2,000 pounds, and I can break it into a Y component and an X component. And again, because the geometry is the same, this will be 2,000 pounds times the sine of 45 degrees. And this will be 2,000 pounds times the cosine of 45 degrees. OK. So that gives us uh, the components of uh, two of the forces. Um, it looks like I'm running out of time. So for this video, so in the next video, we'll continue on. We'll get the components of F sub B and F sub A. So stay tuned for the next video.